the restrictions. Well, let's try to work through some of that now with Sir Professor Sir David Spiegelhalter, who is a leading st statistician, possibly the leading statistician, based at the University of Cambridge and the author of COVID by Numbers. Good morning, uh, Sir David. Good morning. Now, we're hearing about a large number, uh, range of possible scenarios for the spread and impact of Omicron. Um, it's pretty confusing, I think, for most people. And it ranges from uh, a widespread but relatively mild inf disease to a devastating um, wave that could overwhelm the NHS. C can you just start by, uh, with the numbers? Roughly how many cases do you think we have right now? OK, the first thing is to distinguish between people who are getting infected and people who then become cases. <clears throat> because the data we see every day are just the people who have got, got ill, they've got symptoms, they've gone along, got a PCR test, they've gone onto the system and they've been recorded as a positive uh, case. And those are running, um, you know, yesterday they went down a bit to 90,000, but we shouldn't take too much notice of those exact numbers. Um, it depends so much on who, on whether people get symptoms, whether they decide to get tested. And labs are going to get very stretched. And so um, they actually only give a very crude idea of what the infection rate was, <coughs> I'm sorry, um, about four days before. And I think um, there's no doubt that, um, you know, that we are getting hundreds of thousands of infections every day now, and the majority of them will be Omicron. And I think there's no doubt about that at all. Well, the consequences of that is, is a bit more tricky. But one thing we can be absolutely sure now about the consequences are purely of becoming a case, you know, because then you're supposed to isolate for 10 days. And, um, and that's going to cause, is causing already, and will cause even more, massive disruption. And that's nothing to do with whether how ill people get and hospitalizations. We just know that there's going to be huge disruption over, over you know, next weeks and months. Do you think, um, well, look, first of all, let's do a bit of range finding. Um, do, you, do you think that uh, the likely rate of hospitalizations, given all that, is going to be greater or less, fewer, lesser than with last year's Delta wave? Uh, it could be, could be greater, could be lesser. Now, I know this is, sounds like I'm completely sitting on the fence, and that's because I'm sitting on the fence because <clears throat> all the modelling says we don't know. Um, the, the suggestion is, uh, you had this discussion just now with Mark Walput about the range of scenarios that are explored. Well, one of those scenarios that has been modelled is just to stick with plan B and not to bring in any new interventions at all. And the models then suggest that hospitalisations would go, uh, uh, you know, pretty confident they're going to go above 3,000 a day. Well, that's still less than it was last winter. So um, even if we don't do anything more, um, you know, they could be better than last winter. Um, but, and if we did do things, uh, you know, bring in other, other sort of restrictions, then that could be reduced. But enormous uncertainty about those numbers. There's so much we don't know. One of the, we, we are finding out information now from London where hospitalizations are going up. And one of the very interesting things is that um, if you look at the, uh, the new cases, the new hospitalizations over and above what there have been over the last few months, um, around about half of those are actually people who are admitted with something else and then were found to have COVID, probably the Omicron var var uh, variant. And so that suggests that if you've got a population where, where a huge number are getting infected, then they will might go to hospital for something else, but then they found to have COVID, and so they have to be treated you know, as they've got COVID, which, of course, is a huge drain on resources. So um, the, just having a high level of infection itself causes this huge um, uh, you know, stress on resources, even if people are not getting that ill. So uh, you're thinking that even if, as people keep saying, the South African data, and I'd be interested in your view about that, uh, is suggesting that it might be milder. Even with that, we could still face, not just because of the numbers, uh, but because of the phenomenon you've just described, an overwhelming pressure on the NHS? Could do, and it could be, um, you know, it could be manageable, even with sticking with the, with the, um, um, the uh, situation at the moment. I mean, it, it very much depends on, you know, the, 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 there is so much uncertainty. 
And so what does one do in terms of the action? And I'm certainly not going to suggest any policy whatsoever, um, is, is that, um, you know, just how cautious does one want to be? But as Mark Walpert said, one of the crucial things is you can't wait to find out. We can't wait for hospitalizations to go through the roof before we do something about it, because by then it's too late. And in fact, what happens by the end of the new year, by the end of this year, is pretty well built in now. There's almost pretty well nothing we can do about it. And boosters won't have a big effect on it. And we're going to be running. Hospitalizations will be up. It's estimated between 1,000 and 2,000 a day. And that is going to happen, whatever we do. So the crucial thing is, you know, when we go further into the new year, um, how, what's what's that peak going to be? Can we delay it? Can we flatten it? And um, we will know more. You know, we're learning more every day. But in the same case, every day we delay will have a, a bigger impact further on. Now, I'm glad I'm not having to make those decisions um, because they are extremely difficult ones. Because uh, well, there indeed, are you say... <laughs> Forgive me. Uh, you say that every day makes a difference. Uh, everybody now, I think, is beginning to understand what the word exponential means, doubling and so on, doubling every day and so on. If you had a free hand, what signal would you be looking for to see that we needed to take uh, stricter, more severe measures, greater restrictions? What, what, what signal in the data would you be looking for? Oh, I, I think looking at what everyone else looks at. I mean, we would love to know exactly how many people are being infected. Um, and, um, and we will find that out. But a bit right with rather a delay when we do a proper infection survey, which is going on all the time, but it means there's about a week's delay before we hear about what the results are. Um, we have to just work with the data we've got because we don't see when the virus is transmitted. And we don't see exactly how, you know, why people get particularly ill or whatever. We have to infer it. And that's what stats is about, I suppose, trying to work out what's going on from the little globits of information that we actually find, which are deeply imperfect. And that, that I think, is, is inevitable. Um, yeah, I, I, I think one of the things, the other thing, is to actually look outside this country and to see what's happening, for example, in Europe. Holland's just locked down over Christmas, which is something that our government is, of course, extremely reluctant to bring in measures before Christmas. Um, but uh, it's going to be, you know, Austria and Germany, for example, have just managed to control their huge delta peak. It's come down. Their death rates are still, you know, at least double what they are in the UK. And then Omicron's going to hit them. Uh, it's going to be very, very tough for these countries. Um, and, uh, you know, we're not in a great situation, but actually with our vaccine rollout uh, coverage of boosters is extremely good you know it should have been better we should have done a huge amount more during the autumn i think but um it's getting better all the time and so we're actually comparatively in a somewhat better situation than many many other countries the other thing is that sorry uh, sorry, uh, uh, Professor Spiegelhalter, uh, I think we've run out of time, unfortunately. Oh. But uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us this morning. Thank you.